right guys, today we're going to talk about what makes our boat a sailboat. As you know, our boat is electric. And by the way, if you didn't know that our boat is electric, then you must be new to our channel, which means that I would highly recommend going back to the very beginning of our story and binge watch from step one when we bought our beat up boat, renovated from the ground up with hopes and dreams to sail around the world. And you can work your way forward from there. But as I was saying, our boat is electric, which means that we rely on our sails more than your typical cruiser. Because not having a diesel engine to fall back on when the conditions are suboptimal kind of forced us to become better sailors and forced us to improve our sailing skills from the very beginning. We met so many cruisers and sailors out there that keep telling us that they motored 70% of the time because when the wind is too light, they have to motor through. When the wind is too heavy, they have to motor through it. Honestly, we get it. People have places to go and a time to get there and no judgments. But because we don't have a diesel engine, it forces us to play extra close attention to the weather and what the wind is doing and knowing when it's too light or it's too heavy or even knowing when it's not okay to go sailing. Speaking of wind forecasts, this week is perfect. We've been waiting in Menorca for about a month waiting for the perfect weather window to sail to Sardinia and this is it. So we figured today would be a perfect day to give you a tour of our sail closet. Is this a good angle? <laughs> so, uh, let's start with our mainsail. It's usually the first sail up and the last sail down because it's the most difficult to get up and down. You kind of have to be facing into the wind so that you can actually hoist it. So normally when we're about to leave anchor or just after we slip the lines from a dock, we'll put the mainsail up and then decide what head sail we're gonna use later. Pretty much every sailboat has a mainsail and they're all called a mainsail which is quite convenient. Unlike head sails, which all have different names for different conditions, the main sail's the main sail and it doesn't change. Our boat, when we got it, came with a relatively new mainsail, uh, but the problem with it is that it only had one reefing point because as the wind increases, um, our boat gets overpowered and so you have to make the sails smaller the more and more wind you get. With only one reefing point, it meant at about 15 knots of wind or so, we needed to put the first reef in and anything above maybe 20, we were overpowered with the mainsail. So in the Caribbean, it was a little bit less of an issue because the wind didn't pick up that much. But on our sail from Curacao to Colombia, it was heavy enough that we were overpowered and the wind vane couldn't keep up. And we actually got knocked down when we came up and over a wave. So after that, we knew that we were gonna need more reefing points in our mainsail. And when we were in Guatemala, we actually had a sailmaker install two more and that was great because we could finally balance our boat in pretty heavy weather conditions and keep sailing rather than having to drop the main and kind of go downwind. And this is by far like the coolest place to hang out on a boat while you're sailing if it's tied off and you do it safely. So we sailed the whole loop of the Caribbean with our original mainsail that came with Uma. While we were in the Bahamas, we measured our sails and when we made it back to Norfolk, we got a full new set main and head sail before we crossed the Atlantic because our main was starting to show signs of age and we didn't want to have a blowout in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So what we have now is our new mainsail, which is now four years old, but it's still holding up really, really well. We put three reefing points in it, same as our original which we absolutely love because with a third reef in we can go upwind in 35 plus knots of wind although we try to avoid that at all costs with the new mainsail we also built a stack pack we originally built some lazy jacks from some rope we found at home depot which really help bringing the sail down it keeps it from falling down all over the deck but a stack pack like this is really useful because once the sail comes down we can zip it closed and we can keep the sunlight off of it so it doesn't get any UV damage while we're not sailing. Um, every day that the sail is up exposed to the sun is sort of one more day taken off of its life. And since we've had the stack pack uh, for four years with the new mainsail, the new mainsail still 
very crispy and very new um, because it doesn't have hardly any UV damage at all. So our mainsail has three reefing points and we've kept the reefing system as simple as we can. We've got three lines that run to different points along the leech, the aft edge of the sail. And as we pull them consecutively, the sail gets smaller and smaller. And then on the luff of the sail, we have little points that come down and hook to a clip. So the whole sail comes down progressively smaller. So in heavier and heavier wind, we can maintain balance, which is key on a sailboat. So these three lines, we can put them around this new reefing winch we installed in France, and the whole system works really, really well. We do all of our reefing from the mast. In our opinion, it doesn't really make sense to retrofit lines back to the cockpit if your boat doesn't originally have that system installed because you have to reinforce the deck, you have to put blocks and winches, and it's just a nightmare. We've gotten comfortable coming up to the mast in any weather conditions, and we're just used to reefing up here, so, um, it's fine. If in an ideal world, if you have a new boat and the lines are led to the cockpit, that's a bonus, but we don't want to be underneath the Dodger trying to like reef on our knees. We'd much rather just come up here and do it. It's quicker, it's faster, and uh, it's less complicated. So to hoist all of our sails, you need a halyard. That's the rope that goes to the top of the mast and comes back down and attaches to the head or the top of a sail. Um, our boat originally had all the halyards run externally on the mast because it's cheaper and easier and a lot of older boats did that. The problem is when the wind hit the halyard just right and the harmonic frequency lined up, it would just slap, 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 slap. And inside the boat that causes a total racket and it's impossible to think or get anything done. So we eventually ran all of our halyards internally, which does increase a little bit of friction. So it's a little bit more difficult the last you know meter or so to hoist our mainsail, but it's so much better because we don't have halyards banging around anymore. All of our halyards are also controlled by these clutches, which aren't installed upside down. What's cool about these is you can open them slowly and ease a little bit of tension off of a halyard without having to wrap it around a winch first. So we really like these ones. But just like all of our reefing systems, all of our halyards and everything we use to hoist the sails are up here on the mast as well. So we're up here all the time adjusting things and we've just gotten comfortable being at the mast. So these little plastic bits are called slugs. They attach to the front edge of our mainsail or the luff edge of our mainsail and they run up and down this track in our mast. They're what keep the mainsail attached to the mast. It's the system that our boat came with it's fine, um, it does add a little bit more friction than a ball bearing track, but it works. We see the benefit of a ball bearing track and full batten main, so when you just drop the main, it comes down super quick. But this system works, it's really easy to repair, it's super cheap. We keep a couple of these slugs spare, so if we ever do break one, uh, we can just stitch a new one on in 20 minutes or so, and everything's fine. I think we've only broken maybe two, in the last nine years of sailing, so it's a pretty good system. We don't mind it. On the bottom of our boom, there's this triangle piece of line called a boom vang. Um, we built this one ourselves. Normally it's just a block and tackle system, but that doesn't provide a whole lot of force because the whole point of this is to pull the boom down while we're running downwind to keep the sail shape in its proper shape rather than having the boom bounce up and down all the time and add a bunch of curve and twist to the mainsail. So with this system, it's called a cascading block system, I believe, maybe don't quote me on that. But this pulley's three to one, and that's attached to this Dyneema loop, which doubles it, which is attached to this Dyneema loop, which doubles it. So it's actually a 12 to one system because we're only ever adjusting it a few centimeters at a time. So it provides a whole lot of force over a very short distance. So if you're pulling up on maybe 100 pounds, you're putting 1,200 pounds of pressure down on the boom, which means even Kika can actually put enough tension on the boom to keep the sail shape proper. It's a really nice system and it's super easy to make yourself. I don't think we ever made a video on it, but it's pretty easy. You could Google it, uh, cascading block system. So this blue line right here, which is attached to a shackle, is our jibe preventer. We hook it onto the same spot that our main sheet is hooked onto, and it runs all the way forward to the bow and then all the way back to a clutch in the cockpit. So as we ease the mainsail out, we can just pull tension in on our jibe preventer and just keep the boom like locked in place. 
So if it does ever backwind, it doesn't actually come slamming through the cockpit and hitting one of us in the head. So the trim or the angle of a sail is controlled by a sail sheet. This is our main sheet and it's right here in the front of our cockpit. So if we're going downwind, you just ease it out a little bit and it lets the sail swing out to the side. And as we're going upwind, we pull it in to trim the sail in. Um, we absolutely love having it right here in the cockpit, especially because our helm is forward, which means when you're standing at the helm, all of the main sheet controls are right where you need them to be. And all of the jib sheet controls or Genoa sheet controls are right at hand as well. So this boat's very, very easy to sail single-handed because there's just the two of us. One of us is always on watch and the other one of us is usually asleep, which means most of the time when we're out sailing, we actually are sailing this boat single-handed and being able to control all of the sails from one spot without having to climb over cockpit tables and stuff makes sailing this boat really, really easy to do by ourselves. When we built our new Dodger in Norfolk, we also added these extra handrails on the side which provide a really convenient place to grip the boat while we're moving forward or climbing on off the side. But it also acts as sort of a chafe protection because when we are going downwind, our main sheet comes out far enough that it starts to rub here. And if it was rubbing on fabric, it would wear through very, very quickly. So they serve dual purpose and um, we totally love them. All right, so the next thing that we can talk about is our Code Zebra, which is our most recent and newest sale and we've been using it for the last couple of weeks and we absolutely absolutely love it where it has its charm is unlike our spinnaker which is a light wind sail for going downwind the code zero is a light wind sail designed for somewhere around 110 degrees and 60 degrees apparent sail like this a passage like this for instance is a great example because it's blowing maybe five knots today and we have the code zero out and we're probably moving around five knots of speed, which is absolutely amazing. So I don't know if you guys remember, but a few years ago, we built this badass bowsprit, probably the strongest element of our boat at this point. If our boat sunk, I think this would survive. <laughs> we built this bowsprit with a Code Zero, specifically Code Zero in mind, because we knew that uh, a light wind sail inventory would have changed our sailing capabilities because in the beginning, we've only had the heavier sail, like the main sail and the Genoa, which, you know, we were able to move forward, but in light condition, it was very, very slow. And we knew that places like in the Med, where the wind tends to be very, very light at times, it would basically be a game changer to be able to travel at wind speed if we can. So both our Code Zero and our Spinnaker are both on a furler system, which means that instead of having it in a sock where you have to lift the whole thing and then it kind of deploys, we can roll it and unroll it from the cockpit. So if the wind increases while we have it out, we don't have to worry about rushing into the bow and figuring it out there. We can easily roll it in and then bring it down when it's safe to do so. So it's definitely a slower method, but it's a safer method, so we like it. All right, so we are getting close to Sardinia, as you can kind of uh, see behind me. And the wind shifted a little bit, and we need to turn more downwind to clear the headland, um, which means the Code Zero is not really going to be an effective sail anymore. We just took the Code Zero down because we had to fall off and go downwind a little bit more. Uh, we actually ended up jibing so that we could avoid hitting Sardinia. And we put the spinnaker out and now we've got about 10 knots downwind and we're doing about six knots through the water. When we got Uma, she actually came with a very small symmetrical spinnaker, which means both sides were the same, hence symmetrical. But it also meant we had this big heavy pole we had to carry around 
to hold one side of the spinnaker out and setting it up and taking it down was a bit of a nightmare and it definitely took two people and we never flew it at night because if you had to ever take it down at night it was just a bad idea but back in the early days we actually had this spinnaker donated to us by one of our followers and it has been our favorite sail for the last eight years because we like light wind sailing we like calm sea states and downwind with a spinnaker out it just doesn't get better than that this thing's basically a big parachute it just applies a lot of drag to the boat and a lot of sail area for the winds to fill in it doesn't provide any lift so it's really only good downwind. So if the wind is on the beam of the boat or aft. This one actually came in what was called a sock, which made hoisting it and dousing it much, much easier. We could just hoist the whole thing and then pull on the sock and it lifted up and the whole sail just <laughs> whop open and it was awesome. But once the wind filled in or if we turned upwind, we couldn't actually keep the spinnaker hoisted. We had to take the whole thing down every time. So now it's also on a roller furler. The same furler we use for our Code Zero works for our spinnaker. So we can just roll it up if the wind increases or if we have to change direction. And then we can leave it there until it's convenient to take back down again. But since this one was donated to us, it's not really the right size for our boat, which wasn't an issue when it was in a sock because it didn't really matter. It's a little bit too small. But now that it's on a furler, it makes rolling it and unrolling it kind of tricky. And sometimes it's gone wrong and twisted itself up wrong and it meant we weren't able to use our spinnaker for a couple of weeks until we could get to someplace flat where we could open it up in a parking lot somewhere and fix it. The tricky part about head sails is that unlike the mainsail, which just has one name, every mainsail is a mainsail, all head sails have different names. And depending on what country you're from, what area you're from, whether you're a racer or a cruiser or you're around in the 70s and 80s versus now, they all have different names and it's a bit of a contentious point among sailors. This is an asymmetric spinnaker, some people call it a jenniker, but it's one of those points of contention that we're just not gonna get into in this video. So we are on a downwind tack heading towards Corsica now, and in a few hours we will roll it up and jibe it over to the other side and head down towards Sardinia. But for now we're just gonna enjoy some awesome downwind spinnaker sailing. Sardinia and we are now heading south towards Olbia and we've got a beautiful sunrise starting to come up behind me um, but now that we've turned more onto a beam reach we've put the head sail back out and it's full and we're cruising well. about five and a half knots but the wind's coming down over the mountains of Sardinia so it is cold this morning. Kill, but it's very comfortable just as much as my nice wool Icelandic blanket but today is the last day of our passage to Sardinia and as you can tell it's a bit windier so we have the headsail out uh, unlike our mainsail which gives our boat stability the headsail is basically the driving force as you can see it is what's pushing us forward when we're going upwind it's just awesome but there's so many names for head sails and depending on the boat you have, I don't even know. So I, I made a list. <laughs> Storm jib, solid, working jib, jib, J sail, head sail, Genoa, Jinnaker, Spinnaker, Asymmetric Spinnaker, Code Zero, Code D, Screecher, Parasailer. That's only to name a few. This one, it's a Genoa. And I think even some people pronounce it differently. Genoa, Genoa. or Genoa. <laughs> Or is it Yenoa? <laughs> we started off, the boat came with a pretty big Genoa. It was 135, which was way too big for our boat. So we had it rolled in almost 70% of the time. And on a head sail, you kind of want the opposite. You want it to be 
unrolled all the way 70% of the time and rolled in when the wind increases, maybe 30% of the time. So when we were prepping to cross the Atlantic, while we were ordering a new mainsail, we also put in the order for a new headsail. And this one is much smaller and it's a better fit for our boat. <laughs> maybe we should reef in a little bit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so this one I think is a 115, which is the perfect size for a boat. We have it unrolled most of the time. And when we feel like we're overpowered. Kind of like we are now. Kind of like we are now. Then we start rolling it in. And on the head sail, we have three reefing points. They're marked with three dots. So it's much easier to actually see where, you're, where you want to reef. And the more you roll, the more you are. We roll the smaller the sail area. Yeah. Some other aspect on our head sails are one, we have some telltales on it, which basically are tiny little threads that tells you how to trim your sail. So there's a series of threads on the inside of the sail and a series of threads on the outside. And depending on which one is luffing, it kind of gives you an idea of if either you want to bring in the sail or ease it out. And that was very important for us, especially in the beginning of your learning to sail. And one thing that we've had on our new head sail is a window. Yeah, a lot of people watching the videos thought they were holes. No, we don't have a big hole on our Genoa. It's a window so that we can see the telltales on both sides. Another small feature, but actually very important on a head sail is the UV protection. On our old sail, that UV protection got damaged pretty quickly. So we've ended up borrowing sewing machines and sewing it back together a lot of times. This one, uh, it started to show a little bit of uh, signs of age, but when it's rolled in, it means that the sun is not really affecting the sail so much and we can just leave it up. Unlike our light wind sails, like the Spinnaker or the Code Zero, it doesn't have any protection from the UV. So if you rolled in, it will still get UV damage anyway. I will pause this little chat of ours here and I will, we're going to put a reef in on the head sail real quick because we're overpowered, so yeah. The cool thing about our boat and how our cockpit is laid out is that all the sails, all the all the sheets come into the cockpit, so we can. This is the reefing line here, and then winches for the head sails are here, so I can easily roll in from right where I am. <laughs> wheels <laughs> so on each side of the boat we have our Genoa tracks these tracks we've adjusted back in Guatemala back when we glassed over our tow rails but on the tracks we have our Genoa cars and its main purpose is to adjust the twist on the head sail so the more we weave in the more forward the cars would get to kind of avoid that twist and the more rolled out we are the more aft it goes uh, not every boat has them, but just like our traveler for our main sheet, this is a very useful thing to have. Uh, I think that is it for the head sail. I, don't, I can't think of anything else to add, but we are only a few miles away, so we're going to try not to hit that cliff in front of us. And around the corner will be our anchorage. So it was a really good sail because we've literally used all the sails. Well, now that we are anchored and the sun is out and it's a beautiful spot, we decided to pull out all of our sails. So we've talked about our, well, we talked about our main and our Genoa, which are always up because they're protected from the sun and we have the sail covers. So we don't have to take them down unless 
you know, we're setting up for a hurricane or something. But we've talked about our uh, spinnaker and our Code Zero, which we bring down after every sail and we keep them in the back because they don't have any sun protection. But usually at anchor or in the marina before we head out, we kind of know what the wind is going to do and we, we, we know in advance what sail we want to hoist. So if we know it's going to be a light downwind sail, then we hoist the spinnaker in advance and if it changes, we can always switch back for the Code Zero and vice versa. We also have backups to our backup backups. Uh, we have a backup main sail, which, are, which is our older sail. And we also have a backup jib and a backup Genoa. And we like having backups because the reality is if we're on a long passage and one of our sails blow out, we know that we have an extra, like a full set of sails for any emergency. So we like having those. And then the elephant in the room, this bright orange shiny thing. This is our storm jib. We've actually never used it. It's basically what we call the oh shit sail when things are at the worst, when the weather is crazier than you could ever imagine. And hopefully we will never use it, but we treat it basically like a hurricane anchor where we don't want to use it, but the day that we will use it is, we'll be very happy we have it. Well guys, that is pretty much it. That is all the sails that we use and all the sails that we don't use. And... <laughs> yeah? Oh. oh, okay, we have to cuddle up. Oh, we're, we're getting, cozy now. Getting cozy. Do you, do you have anything else you want to um, say? Yeah, I think uh, we probably carry more spare sails than the average cruising boat. Um, but where most people carry spare parts for their diesel engine and fuel tanks, we carry sails because that way we have unlimited range. We, we have a sailboat. So if yeah. we have the right sails for the right condition, it means we can sail in lighter winds, we can sail in heavier winds. If a sail breaks, we have a replacement for it. Uh, so yeah, we carry more sails than probably the average boat. But also keep in mind guys, this is not a video about how to trim sails. <laughs> this is literally just an inventory of the sails that we yeah. use. Every We understand that every boat is different. Trimming sails on every single boat is going to be completely different. And we just know from experience on our boat, how to trim our boat. That doesn't mean that it's the right way or should it's the like way you should do it. <laughs> master class on sail trim someday. Yeah, but master class on sail trims on a Pearson 36.97. <laughs> But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful and enjoyable, I hope. Uh, and maybe a bit of an insight into uh, why our cockpit lockers are full, because they're full of sails. They're full of sails. That's why we don't carry bicycles on board. <laughs> <laughs> These are much more useful. Yeah. Um, all right, well, it is beautiful and sunny, and I think we're just gonna spend the next couple of days on anchor, because it's gonna be weather like this, um, which is pretty sweet for the middle of winter. Yes. And now we have to put all these sails away. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs>